بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Now the next thing is like okay drb elections is fine but what conditions based on what conditions the drb elections is going to start means what exactly they will see in order to decide the drb so by default they decide based on the priority value so every interface have a something called priority value and the default priority value will be 1 and whichever the device is having the highest priority value that will become the dr and the router with the second highest priority value will become the ptr so in our example let's take an example this is your topology and assume these are the priority values what we have configured and in this example 200 is the highest so that particular router d will become the dr and the next highest is 100 so that will become the ptr so if we compare with other values like 10 1 1 so the default election is done based on the priority value and any router which is not a dr bdr as i said it will become the dr other so technically we call them as dr others and what if there is a tie in the priority value because there is a possibility that uh, all the routers may have the same priority value because if you don't make any changes the default priority value will be 1 which means if you go with the default values there will be a tie in the priority value and in case if there is a tie in the priority value the tie breaker will be the router ids so the router is going to select it says that okay uh, whichever the router is having the highest router id now the highest router id means in terms of numbers you know you have to see the first portion if the first first portion is same see the second portion second portion is same see the third or else fourth so you cannot have same router ids on two routers in the ospf domain like in this example um, i'm just using these router ids like 4 5 6 2 3 so which is the highest 6 is the highest so the router f will become the dr because of the highest priority value and the next highest is this one so that will become the pdr so there is no tie in the uh, router ids because you cannot use two routers with the same router ids that has to be unique so this is how the elections are done so the dr bdr elections are done based on the priority value and if there is a tie in the priority value of course highest value if there is a tie in the priority value we can it will automatically decide based on the router ids so we can change the priority values we'll see that in the configuration section probably more in detail like uh, we we can also change the priority values depending upon the requirement but assuming we are going with the default values the router id will be the tie breaker and the next thing let's see quickly one more uh, option there are few few options also we'll see before we go ahead and verify now if the router is having the priority value of 0 that is never become a dr or bdr like in some networks you may want a specific router should never become a dr like if you take an example this is my head office and i always want this router to be the dr and other routers should be others means they should never become a dr then we can go ahead and change the priority values to zeros so when it says zero means it will never become a dr or bdr which means it is not eligible to uh, do the elections so in some scenarios you just want these routers to be always other and they should never take up the role of dr in that scenarios you can just change them to zeros like small branch offices you want them to be the uh, you, you you don't want them to be become a dr in any case because of the small routers now also the dr bdr elections are non pre uh, non preemptive Now, non-preemptive means, like in this example, let's say the router A becomes a DR, and the router B becomes a PDR. In my example, now remaining routers like C, D, E, F, they are others. Let's say, and due to some reason, the router A interface goes down. Maybe the interface goes down, or maybe the router is rebooted, or whatever the case, or the router is down. 
So in that scenarios, automatically it is going to make this B router will become the DR, right? The backup become the DR and any one router from this group, like in this case, the B becomes a DR and let's say the C becomes a BDR. And let's say the A is back. Now A is back again. So maybe you can assume that the router is reloaded due to some reason. So the router is, is, is back, which is having a better priority value or the better router ID, but still A will be in the role of other only. So A is not going to become a DR immediately. So we call this as non preempt uh, Opposite to STP, if you know the STP process, probably STP is preempt, which means if the root bridge goes down and if it comes back again, that will become the root bridge. But it's not like that. So it's like opposite to that one. If the A is back, A has to wait for its role. Now, wait for it means like, let's say if the B also goes down, then C will become the DR, right? And now the A will become the BDR because it is in the line. So probably it has to wait for the process. So that is what non parent behavior. So this is default. Uh, when a better router enters the subnet, no preemption of the existing DRBDR DR occurs, which means if you add any new router which is having a better router ID or the better priority value, that will not take the role of DR unless the existing existing DR and the PDR router fails. Okay, so if you want to force, there is an option like we can use an option of clear IP your process, which we'll be using in our labs. Because if you want to force, then you can reset all the routers and tell that clear the process and do the re-election again. So you can, you can do that. That is like forcing the router to do the re-election process or the complete process, disconnect the neighbors and connect them again. And one more thing in the OSPF uh, networks, as I discussed already, that the neighbor relationship between the DR and the other will go up to full stage, all the seven stages. Like we know the seven stages, like the down stage, initialize stage, two way stage, and then next start stage, exchange state, and then loading stage, and then full stage. So the process or the neighbor uh, process between these two neighbors will go up to full. But whereas the neighbor relationship between the other and other, other and other will be only up to two way, which means they go from down to initialize stage where they send and receive the hellos. And in the two way stage, they become the neighbors and there is no X start, there is no exchange loading or full stages occurs between these two routers. Now the reason is simple because the other cannot send any update to other directly. So there is no point in doing these states. So that's the reason when you verify the neighborship, sometimes you'll see the neighborship is just shows you only two way or full stages, depending upon the type of the neighbor again. And one more thing like the DR and the other, there are two different multicast addresses used here. Like when other is sending an update to the DR, it will use 224.006. So that is a multicast address used by other to the DR means all the DR routers will listen on 224.006. And when the DR, of course the same thing, and when the DR is sending an update to any other router, it is going to send on 224.005. So there are two different multicast addresses used. One is a DR listens on 224.006, means from other to DR is six. And from a DR to any other routers when the updates are sent, it will be sent on 224.005 again. Okay.